good evening today's topic is eeg for anesthesiologists so this is a topic mainly for neurologists but we as anesthetists those who are posted in neurosurgical operation theaters we should know how to interpret basic eeg what is the funda what is the physics behind an eeg interpretation and what are we supposed to look at when we see e see an eeg so eeg is an electrophysiological technique for the recording of electrical activity arising from the human brain particularly the cortex why because the cortical pyramidal neurons in the cortex are oriented perpendicularly to the brain surface and from here the signals are intercepted so the neural activity detectable by the eeg is basically the summation of the excitatory and inhibitory post synaptic potentials that is epip and ipsp of relatively large groups of neurons firing synchronously then these are ampli amplified up to 10000 times for better interpretation of the results so what are the clinical applications of eeg in operation theaters and icu the processed or modified eegs are used to monitor the depth of anesthesia what is popularly known as the bispectral index they are used to anticipate ischemia and infarction again eeg allows continuous monitoring of brain function in the icu in critically ill neurological and post neurosurgery patients in addition to assisting seizure detection and management they are being used to detect secondary injuries and they aid in critical care management especially ischemia cortical spreading depolarizations consciousness assessments and eventually neuroprognostication so all these are different clinical applications of eeg coming to the neurophysiology of eeg the eeg recording electrodes they are placed over the skull so they measure the absolute electrical potentials generated by the neurons of the underlying cerebral cortex so these are basically cortical and subcortical signals and the difference in the voltage that is being caught upon so an estimated area of the cortex of around 10 cm square discharging synchronously is required to generate a deflection on the skull eeg the pyramidal cell bodies are mostly present in layer 3 and layer 5 of the cerebral cortex following the release of neurotransmitters at the end plate excitatory or inhibitory post synaptic potentials are generated secondary to neuronal depolarization in case of excitatory post synaptic potentials with intracellular sodium influx this results in extracellular negativity or if there is hyperpolarization that happens in case of ipsp there is intracellular negativity so basically the summation of the excitatory and the inhibitory post synaptic potentials over a selected cortical regions above which the specific electrodes are placed with synchronous discharge creates an electric field with positive and negative ends which is known as a dipole so this dipole is parallel to pyramidal cell orientation of the cortex and eeg in turn measures this summation so this is the neurophysiology as in how the eeg signal is being generated so as we know this eeg electrodes are placed on the skull and the distance from the skull to the cortical neurons there are some uh, interferences which have to be passed so cerebrally generated eeg voltages must first pass through multiple biological filters that both reduce signal amplitude and spread the eeg activity out more widely than its original source vector thus these voltages must traverse the brain csf meninges skull and ultimately the skin prior to reaching its specific recording site where they can be detected additionally other biologically generated electrical activity that is by the skull muscles the eyes and the tongue even the distantly placed heart 
all these organs and the minor movements of these muscles, they may create massive voltage potentials that frequently overwhelm and obscure the cerebral activity. In fact, one of the most common artifacts that we encounter while reading the EEG is the movement of the eyes, which obscures the cerebral activity. So temporary detachment of the recording electrodes, suppose the electrodes have gone off. It is called as an electrode pop artifact. Which it may further erode the EEG or even imitate brain rhythms and seizures. So an electrode pop out may act as a bias and you may interpret the EEG as having a seizure. So when we are talking about EEG, we must as a thumb rule, know these four waves or four waveform frequencies that is alpha, beta, theta and delta. So alpha lies in 8 to 12 hertz, beta from 13 to 30 hertz, theta from 4 to 7 hertz and delta less than 4 hertz. So the predominance of waveforms in an EEG varies based on the individual's age and state of wakefulness. The EEG waveforms start with discontinuous backgrounds during the prenatal phase and they mature to be continuous further. So the normal adult, the resting posterior dominant rhythm of 8.5 Hz is in the posterior head region. So it is noted at around 8 years and the slower waveforms are less during the wakeful state and dominate during the later stages of sleep. That is theta and delta, they come up when the patient is drowsy or sleeping. And so these are the slower waveforms which come up during the later stages of sleep. Also, there is an anterior to posterior distribution of waveforms with faster frequencies in the anterior and slower frequencies in the posterior head regions. So there is temporal distribution as well as according to the stages of sleep, there is specific dominance of specific waves. Again, Sleep spindles and K-complexes are other notable waveforms that appear during the first year of life and are useful to differentiate the various stages of sleep. These are the broad classification of the indications of EEG in operation theater as well as in the ICU. So first and foremost, they are used to classify the type of seizures and locate the onset of seizures and locate the exact anatomical area. Then those patients who are undergoing epilepsy surgery, they have to do a VADA test for the functioning of the eloquent cortex where sodium amiobarbital is used to determine the hemisphere dominance for detecting the language and memory areas. So again, EEG is useful here. As we saw, EEG is used to classify the type of seizure. It is used again to diagnose status epilepticus, to diagnose it, manage it, and then further induce therapeutic coma in these patients as a part of treatment modality. Again, patients with altered mental status, either ranging from various etiologists, either maybe secondary to some toxins, alcoholism, either secondary to metabolic causes or secondary to certain encephalopathies, ultimately, they will show some changes in the EEG patterns. So patients with altered mental status as a part of diagnostic workup, EEG is a very useful objective tool to pinpoint the etiology of altered mental status. Encephalopathic patients with unexplained etiologies to attain, assess the degree and pinpoint the cause of encephalopathy, EEG is useful. Again, patients who present with syncope or symptoms of loss of consciousness with a negative cardiac workup. You may think the syncope is due to some aortic stenosis. You have done an echo, you have done your cardiac markers, you have done your baseline ECG. You don't find anything with the cardiac workup. You may have to go for an EEG to ascertain the cause of loss of consciousness. Sometimes, many a times, post-trauma patients, you see them in ICU 
for over a month or so they are in a state